It's Monday. Good morning. I hope you're well. I hope you had a good weekend. I've got Monday voice because I spoke twice and led worship twice. And then the tired voice on top of that. Been up since 535, but hey, it'll take some time to wake up the voice. I hope you're good and uh, you're ready to hear what God has to say to us this morning from Psalm 139. This is a lot of people's favorite song. The, um, you know I love the show The Chosen. I got my show, Chosen shirt on. If you haven't watched it yet, you should definitely watch The Chosen. Great TV show. It's on. Get The Chosen app. Watch season one. And there's uh, five episodes of season two. See, there's another episode coming out next week. But in the last episode, Mary Magdalene was uh, memorizing some scripture. And uh, she was memorizing this psalm. This psalm brings a lot of comfort. And it also should bring a lot of um, joy in your identity, in who God made you to be. God loves you the way you are. Okay, God loves you totally, completely as you are, not as you should be. Um, you aren't perfect, I'm not perfect, but he loves you the way you are. He made you the way he intended to make you. Do you believe that? See, God's got a design. And he's got a purpose for you. He's got a plan to use you as you are, even your weaknesses. So he designed your strengths and he designed your weaknesses. And he's using those weaknesses as a human being to change the world. And you're like, what? What do you mean my weaknesses? Well, see, God... God always knows what's ahead, right? And he knew that it would take a guy like Peter, who was a loudmouth, and who was impetuous and impulsive, to be the leader of the disciples. Someone who would think out of the box. Someone who would drive the establishment nuts. Um, Paul, here's Paul, and he's a Pharisee of Pharisees. He... he <laughs> He's the most religious, educated person, one of the top 10 intellects of all time. What does God do? He takes a Jew and he sends him to the Gentiles. Jews didn't speak to Gentiles. And what's he do? He sends Paul, the Jew of Jews, teacher of teachers, to Gentiles, to people that aren't Jewish. And he changed their world. I mean, God always uses what you don't expect him to use. And... Um, God planned where you would live, where you would be born. He planned uh, your gifts. He, um, he planned your passions, um, your good passions. <laughs> and uh, he wants you to be you. The best advice I ever got from Chuck Swindoll when I met him, he's a pastor. And he said, be yourself, Bob. Just be yourself and walk with God. That's all you got to be. He doesn't want you to be someone he didn't make you to be. And, um, you know, I don't have to be um, Randy Evans or Rick Warren or, or you know, Billy Graham or, or uh, um, someone else. Like, I look at our staff at our church. We are so different. All of us are so incredibly different. You know, you got Ben Hall and you got Bob Evans. We are East and West in personality. And the Lord uses us on the same team to do God's work. You've got um, Spencer Coors in, in Chase. You got Steve. Um, over in uh, Sorrento, we're all so different, but God planned it that way. He's got this force of people that are all his, all different, and he knows um, your heart. And this is where Psalm 139 comes in. It says, Lord, you've examined my heart. You know everything about me. Now that is comforting and that is um, a little disquieting too, right? Um, you know when I sit, you know when I stand up, you know my thoughts, even when I'm far away. Can't get away from you. You know, you see me when I travel. You see me when I rest at home. You know everything I do. See, God is everywhere at once, always awake. His spirit is om omnipresent. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. So, you know when you uh, are going to say something to somebody and you bite your tongue and you stop yourself 
God knew what you were going to say. <laughs> Thankfully, the person didn't. But you know what that means? Is that means your heart is an open book. Because your heart is the source of everything you say. So when you are coming before God, don't think you got to put on flowery words, Jesus said in Matthew 6. Just be honest and speak to him. He knows what you're going to say. So, you know, Lord, you know my heart is disquieted within me this morning. You know, Lord, my heart is okay. Lord, you know I'm discouraged. Lord, you know that I'm happy. Lord, you know that I'm confused. Lord, you know that I'm fearful. And he, all that, you don't tell him. Get the strength from him by telling him what he already knows. Talk about where you're really at with God. Write down, Lord, I don't even feel like functioning today. You know, tell him the truth. Because he, he knows what you're going to say even before you say it. You go before me. This is comforting to me. And you follow me. He is my, he goes before me to prepare the way. Nothing's going to be a surprise to God. And he's our rear guard as well. He's got our back. That, your back is your most vulnerable point. You don't have to be afraid. God has got your back. You know that um, I am a very fearful man. Bob Evans is a fearful man. And uh, 2012, 2011, um, you know, we had to make a decision. Are we going to go to Israel with this really good deal with these 20 pastors? And uh, one day we're at staff meeting and, uh, and Ben says, so are you going? And I said, I don't know yet. And it was November and he's like, you got to choose a lane, buddy. <laughs> and it's because I was afraid to go. I, I, you know, I'm going halfway across the world, never been on a trip that big. Um, I was scared. But see, this verse tells me that he goes before me and he follows me. He's my rear guard. He's got my back. And he places his hand of blessing on my head. You are a child of God. And so with, with that knowledge, that means that your father loves you. And he's got good stored up for you. Even in the middle of the hard things in life, he wants to bless you, not blast you, right? And such knowledge is too wonderful for us. We don't get it, right? But God is omniscient. He knows everything. And we can't escape from his spirit. <coughs> Excuse me. We can't flee from his presence. If we were going to go up to heaven, of course he'd be there. If I was going to go down to the grave and if I die... He's going to be with me there. If I rode on the wings of the morning and I dwelled on the other side of the ocean, he'd be there too, which means you have a lot of freedom in life. Um, God is with you wherever you go. He's made you with certain desires. So let's say I wanted to plant a church in Hawaii. Why not? There's people there that need Jesus, right? He'd be with me on the other side of the ocean. Even on the other side of the ocean, your hand will guide me. Your strength will support me. God's never going to leave you, never going to forsake you. Even if I asked the darkness to hide me from you, Lord, the darkness would be light to you. So the, under the cover of night is when most people sin or when they think they can get away with stuff. It's just as open to God as in the, at noonday in the sun. In the darkness, I can't hide for you. To, to you, the night shines as bright as the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. Jonah thought he could get away from God. God said, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh to preach. He said, no, I'm going to go to the far side of the sea. You know, he got on a boat, thought he could get away from God. Went into the depths of the boat. Couldn't get away from God. God sent a storm. He says, well, I'm going to kill myself. So he gets the guys to throw him overboard. I can get away from God by suicide. God says, no, you can't. And he saved him. Even in the dark, darkest depths of the sea, God went after Jonah because you can't get away from God. And so, since that's true, thank him that he's with you. Thank him that he, he made you the way you are. He knit you together in your mother's womb. Realize that you are wonderful and beautiful and complex. You're a masterpiece. Every human being is a masterpiece. One of my favorite things to do is to people watch when I'm sitting in a mall. Back when they had shares in the malls before the pandemic. And my daughters would be shopping the mall. I'd sit there with a the coffee and I'd just look at all the people. 
They are wonderful. People are amazing. You are amazing. Um, when I run into you and I see the different quirks and quirks of your personalities and, and your gifting and what you can do, I, I'm amazed. And, uh, and you're, you are formed as a masterpiece by God. He's put every little thing into you that he wanted to be. All your gifts. I, it's just, you're amazing. You, his workmanship is marvelous. So don't let the devil or anyone else demean you or put you down. Walk with your head held high. You're a child of God. You're beautiful in his sight. He loves all the intricacies about your personality. And he knew you before you were born. You're not, you may have been a surprise to your mom and dad, but you weren't a surprise to God. I was a surprise to my mom and dad. Two of my daughters were a surprise to us, but it wasn't a surprise to God. They were delivered on purpose by his grace to us. Today, my beautiful daughter, Natalie, is 24 years old, and I love her personality. She's just amazing. And uh, she, she's, she's bright, she's, she's creative, she's great with people, she's spontaneous. She's got a hilarious sense of humor. She brings, she brings light and joy to everyone that she meets. She can go and talk to anybody. And I just think she's amazing. And every moment of Natalie's life was laid out before a single day had passed. That means God's got a roadmap for your life. You don't have to be afraid. He's got a plan. And how precious are these thoughts about God? They're, they can't be numbered. We can't even count them. God's um, thoughts and plans and designs for you are way more in number than the grains of sand on the earth. And he's got an eternity of adventure planned for you. Heaven's not going to be boring you. You see, when you get to 96 and you're about to pass into eternity, you're only in grade kindergarten. You're going into grade one. He's got adventures planned for you for the ages to come. You're going to have awfully big adventures and have a lot of fun. God's got great things for you. And then verse 19 says, he's also going to defeat all evil. And the prayer is, Lord, destroy the wicked and uh, get them out of the way. And he will one day. And uh, Lord, we hate evil with you. That's what the next few verses say. Um, I will not back up those who do evil against the Lord. And that means you were designed to be on the side of light. You are part of God's army. And he's got an army. He's not afraid that we're not afraid to fight what's evil. So, so that's a good thing to have um, that sense of justice against evil and have that as part of your day-to-day -day routine and you go correct the wrongs in the world. He's got you here for that reason. To go and correct the injustices. My favorite verse. One of my favorite verses is Isaiah 117. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Your, your design on earth is to be against everything that's evil. And to have God your father. Um, as your motivating factor in life. And his character. Ask God for his character to be put in you. So today when you start your Monday. Realize you need to ask God to put his character into you so you can go out and enact justice and love and mercy in the world. And then the last thing I'm going to go over today is Psalm 139.23. This is a good prayer to pray every day. Okay, Lord, search me. Know my heart. Test me and know my anxiety and my anxious thoughts, my worries. And point out anything in me that offends you because I want to be like you. Lord. So he go, th this writer talks about people that are evil and what he's saying is, Lord, please examine my heart and my motives and please point out anything in me that is wrong, that offends you. I don't want to be like people that are against you. Lord, I want every ounce of my being to be pure and on track with you. I want my motives to be pure. Please help my words to be pure. Point out anything in me that offends you, Lord, because I don't want to be like the enemies um, of, of God. I want to be holy on your side. 
So Lord, give me an undivided heart, right? David says that in other verses too. And lead me along the path of everlasting life. You are on a journey. And right now you're not perfect. One day you will have no sin anymore. But you're on the journey to perfection. You're on the journey where you're growing of sanctification. You're growing in Jesus. So in the meantime, don't get discouraged if you if you mess up. He forgives you. He's got your back. He knew you were going to mess up when he died for you on the cross. You're forgiven of all your mistakes and sins that you're going to make in the year 2027 and 2050. Your father loves you. He thinks you're beautiful and you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're his child and he extends his grace and mercy to you. I want you to watch Sherry Lynn and Rhonda's ver musical version of this song. girls that was awesome um let's pray together okay father for uh the four of us that are together right now um thinking about the fact that we can't get away from you knowing that you love us knowing that you've uh, prepared this day and you knew what would happen on this monday 
June 14th, 2021. We give ourselves fully to you, Lord, trusting you, asking you to fill us with your spirit. Please give us the sensitivity and the direction that we need to help the people around us to do our jobs well, to bless and encourage. We pray, Lord, that uh, we would not be afraid. We pray that you'd give us courage. And with your presence, Lord, going with us, we know that we're safe and we, we worship you. I thank you, Lord, that you love the people watching. May you give them hope, I pray today, in Jesus. In your name, Lord God, amen. You guys have a great day. Jermico and I will be together t tomorrow morning to do this with you. So we'll see you tomorrow.